It's time to relax, grab a drink, pull up a chair by the hearth, and have a seat in the Scald Circle to listen to the tale of The Rabbi's Bogeyman, from Jewish folklore as told by Casimir. Before we begin our story, we wanted to remind you that we release new tales for free every week. Our shorter tales release on Wednesdays, and our longer chapter stories release on every other Saturday. Find out where you can hear them on our website at thescaldcircle.com. And be certain to subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Podbean, Spotify, or whatever your favorite podcast app is. That way, you'll never miss out on one of our enchanting tales from around the world. And this is the tale of the Rabbi's Bogeyman. Rabbi Lion of the ancient city of Prague sat in his study in the ghetto looking very troubled. Through the window he could see the river Moldau, narrow streets the Jewish quarter clustered around the cemetery, which still stands to this day, and where is to be seen this famous plan's tomb. Beyond the ghetto rose the towers and spires of the city, but just at that moment it was not the cruelty of the people to the Jews that occupied the rabbi's thoughts. He was unable to find a servant, even one to attend the fire on the Sabbath for him. The truth was that the people were a little afraid of the rabbi. He was a very learned man, wise and studious and a scientist. And because he did wonderful things, people called him a magician. His experiments in chemistry frightened them. Late at nights, they saw little spurts of blue and red flame shine from his window. And they said that demons and witches came at his beck and call so nobody would enter his service. If, as they declare, I am truly a magician, he said to himself, why should I not make for myself a servant, one that will tend the fire for me on the Sabbath? He set to work on his novel idea, and in a few weeks had completed his mechanical creature, a woman. She looked like a big, strong, laboring woman, and the rabbi was greatly pleased with his handiwork. Now to endow it with life, he said. Carefully, in the silence of his mysterious study at midnight, he wrote out the unpronounceable sacred name of God on a piece of parchment. Then he rolled it up and placed it in the mouth of the creature. Immediately, it sprang up and began to move like a living thing. It rolled its eyes, waved its arms, and nearly walked through the window. In alarm, Rabbi Lion snatched the parchment from its mouth, and the creature fell helpless to the floor. I must be careful, said the rabbi. It is a wonderful machine with many springs and screws and levers, and will be most useful to me as I learn to control it properly. All the people marveled when they saw the rabbi's machine woman running errands and doing many duties controlled only by his thoughts. She could do everything but speak, and Rabbi Lion discovered that he must take the name from her mouth before he went to sleep, otherwise she might have done mischief. One cold Sabbath afternoon... The rabbi was preaching in the synagogue, and the little children stood outside his house looking at the machine woman seated by the window. When they rolled their eyes, she did, and at last they shouted, Come and play with us. She promptly jumped through the window and stood among the boys and girls. We are cold, said one. Canst thou make a fire for us? The creature was made to obey orders. So she at once collected sticks and lit a fire in the street. Then, with the children, she danced round the blaze in great glee. She piled on all the sticks and old barrels she could find, and soon the fire spread and caught a house. The children ran away in fear, while the fire blazed so furiously that the whole town became alarmed. Before the flames could be extinguished, a number of houses had been burned down and much damage had been done. The creature could not be found. Only when the parchment with the name, which could not burn, was discovered amid the ashes, was it known she had been destroyed in the conflagration. The council of the city was indignant when it learned the strange occurrence, and Rabbi Lion was summoned to appear before King Rudolph. What is this I hear? asked his majesty. Is it not a sin to make a living creature? It had no life but that which the sacred name gave it, replied the rabbi. I understand it not, said the king. Thou wilt be in prison and make another creature, so that I may see it for myself. If it is as thou sayest, thy life shall be spared. If not, in truth thou profanest God's sacred law and makest a living thing. Thou shalt die and all people shall be expelled from this city. Rabbi Lion at once set to work. This time made a man much bigger than the woman that had been burned. As your majesty sees, says the rabbi, 
when his task was completed. It is but a creature of wood and glue with springs that joints. Now, observe. And he put the sacred name in its mouth. Slowly, the creature rose to its feet and saluted the king who was so delighted that he cried. Give him to me, Rabbi. That I cannot, said Rabbi Lion, solemnly. The sacred name must not pass from my possession. Otherwise, the creature may do great damage again. This time I shall take care and will not use the man on the Sabbath. The king saw the wisdom of this and set the rabbi at liberty, allowed him to take the creature to his house. The Jews looked on in wonderment when they saw the creature walking along the streets by side of the rabbi lion. The children ran away in fear, crying, The bogeyman. The rabbi exercised caution with his bogeyman this time. And every Friday, just before the Sabbath commenced, he took the name from its mouth so as to render it powerless. It became more wonderful every day. One evening, it startled the rabbi from a doze by beginning to speak. I want to be a soldier, it said, and fight for the king. I belong to the king. You made me for him. Silence, cried Rabbi Lion, and it had to obey. I like this not, said the rabbi to himself. This monster must not be my master, or it may destroy me and perhaps all the Jews. He could not help but wonder whether the king was right, and that it must be a sin to create a man. This creature not only spoke, but grew surly and disobedient, and yet the rabbi hesitated to break it up, for it was most useful to him. It did all his cooking, washing, and cleaning, and three servants could not perform the work so neatly and quickly. One Friday afternoon... When the rabbi was preparing to go to the synagogue, he heard a loud noise in the street. Come quickly, people shouted at his door. Your bogeyman is trying to get into the synagogue. Rabbi Lion rushed out in a state of alarm. The monster had slipped from the house and was battering down the door of the synagogue. What art thou doing? demanded the rabbi. Trying to get into the synagogue to destroy the scrolls of the holy law, answered the monster. Then wilt thou have no power over me. I shall make a great army of bogeymen who shall fight for the king and destroy all of the Jews. I will kill thee first, exclaimed Rabbi Lion, and springing forth he snatched the parchment with the name so quickly from the creature's mouth that it collapsed at his feet into a mass of broken springs and pieces of wood and glue. For many years afterwards, these pieces were shown to visitors in the attic of the synagogue when the story was told of the rabbi's bogeyman. And that is the tale of the rabbi's bogeyman. From Jewish folklore. Thank you for listening to our story. If you enjoyed it, we recommend taking a look at our Patreon page, as noted in the description below. You can earn great rewards while also supporting us, to keep these stories alive for generations to come. Also, remember to subscribe to us on your podcast app, and leave us a five-star rating if you enjoyed this story. A special thank you to Kat for their support this month. Without your contribution, we wouldn't be able to continue these stories, and we truly appreciate it. Visit thescaldcircle.com to stay up to date with all of our current events, news, and much more. Not only that, but you can also visit our story archive of every tale we have ever told. It's sorted by origin and region for the convenience of your listening pleasure. Thank you for listening to our story. <laughs>